Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Harpreet Sahota, hacker in residence at Voxel 51. I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jacob Marks and Brent Griffin, who are both research scientists at Voxel 51. Today, we'll be talking with Sunny Chin about her paper, A Label is Worth a Thousand Images in Dataset Distillations, which was accepted into NIRIPS 2024. If you're unfamiliar with the topic, dataset distillation there's an area of research that studies how to create smaller synthetic data sets that can train models to perform comparably to those that were actually trained on uh, much larger data sets, better than even the original data set that the large model is trained on. So this line of research examines what makes good training data and whether you can create a compact data set that really captures the essence of the full data set. As you'll learn in this presentation, the success of this process isn't primarily about how those synthetic images are generated, but rather the types of labels that you use. And in fact, we'll learn that how you label data is more important than the data itself, especially when you're working with limited data. We'll learn about the power of something called soft labels, which provide a probability distribution across classes instead of just a single hard label. We'll also talk about how ensembles can further boost performance, and whether expert knowledge is strictly necessary for effective distillation. I'm excited to get into the talk and learn more about the relationship between data, knowledge, and model performance. I'll go ahead and turn it right over to you, Sunny. Go ahead and take it away. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the invite. My name is Sunny, and I am a PhD student at Harvard University. Today, I'm super excited to present our work so this is a joint project with Zhiwei De from Google DeepMind and David alvarez Melis from Harvard University. So it has been briefly introduced, but what is data distillation? So data distillation refers to various approaches that aim to create compact, high fidelity data summaries that captures the essential knowledge of a target data set. So this approach is particularly relevant in the modern era where models are trained on increasingly massive data sets, which could be costly and time consuming to manage. So by compressing a data set into a smaller and highly informative subset, we can significantly reduce the computational resources and storage requirements. Therefore, data distillation is the research that will en enable future efficient model training and deployment. And just for a quick overview, in recent years, there are so many methods have been proposed to achieve this data compression. So particularly in image classification tasks, from matching shark trees to matching gradients, different ways people have come up to compress the synthetic images. However, rather than proposing yet another distillation method, our goal in this work is really to understand what specific aspects of the distilled data that drive efficient learning. So one major challenge in achieving this goal is that so many existing methods use very complex and distinct techniques to generate synthetic images. And in our work, we emphasize a very common but often overlooked element that really unites these methods. That is the use of soft labels or these probabilistic labels. So in our first set of ablation studies, we examine the performance of several state-of-art distillation methods, both with and without the use of soft labels. So in the figure you are looking at, the solid lines represent the performance of methods when soft labels are used, while the dashed lines represent their hard label counterparts. And on y-axis, we're showing the accuracy of models trained on those distilled data sets. And on the x-axis, we're showing the data budget from small to large. The performance difference really just showing that soft labels are absolutely crucial for the success of these state of art distillation methods. So following this, we also establish a simple yet very powerful baseline, which we call the soft label baseline. Here in the soft label baseline, we simply pair randomly selected images from the training data with expert generated labels to form a distilled data set. Expert labels refer to uh, labels generated by a model expert, and this expert has been trained on the full data set. And uh, we show the results in the red lines in the figure, and you can see that the soft label 
face light really performed on par with many of the state of art distillation methods on ImageNet 1K. And this comparison is to show you the essential role labels play in data sets distillation. So beyond highlighting the importance of soft labels, we also establish a data knowledge scaling law. In the left figure, we show that the optimal expert model to generate these soft labels really vary based on data budget. So in other words, if you have a smaller data budget, it is often more optimal to use an expert that has been trained on fewer epochs. And as you increase the data budget show on the x-axis, it is better to use an expert that has seen more data. Using this insight, we establish an empirical data Pareto frontier for uh, data efficient learning. So for instance, in tiny image net, we can quantify that the use of this optimal expert knowledge is really equivalent to a six time data size, set size reduction. So now you may wonder, so is expert knowledge the only way we can distill data and achieve efficient learning? And that's what we are trying to do on the right figure. So on the right figure, we are exploring the relationship between knowledge distillation and data distillation. So if you recall, data distillation is a compression of data sets. While knowledge distillation refers to how do you use a teacher model to teach a student model. So we were the first work to make a connection between those two distinct fields. What we are trying to do here is that we generate labels using state-of-art data distillation methods, which is called backpropagation in time. And those labels, despite being generated with the data distillation methods, they really recover the same soft label that would have been generated by an expert. So to this end, we're basically saying that it's not only that knowledge distillation helps you achieve data distillation, it seems that they converge to the same solution. So I think our work has three main takeaways. So first, the success of many existing data distillation methods is not driven by these fancy image generation strategies, but really by the use of these like informative probabilistic labels. And the second insight is that knowledge distillation is a simple yet powerful baseline for data distillation. And that is what we have been trying to do by establishing this soft label baseline. And finally, we were trying to have this quantification between the use of expert knowledge and data. And specifically, we're showing that in this case of tiny image net, this trade-off is this number six. Knowledge is six times data size reduction. Thank you. This is uh, a high level summary of uh, the work. Please check out the full paper if you're interested. So Sunny, thank you so much for, for the overview of your paper. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into Brent to see if he's got uh, any questions for you. Great presentation. Great work. I guess one thing I'd like to know a little bit about is it's clear that these probabilistic labels are important. The example with random is really good. What is some of your intuition for why? probabilistic labels are so effective compared to using hard labels? Yeah, so I think when people think about hard labels, it's really the ground truth of an image. So if you think about the goldfish, and it's really kind of like saying that this is an image of a goldfish. However, when you enable models to see the entire probabilistic distribution across all the possible classes, we actually look at the examples and it puts, for example, an image of goldfish. It says it's possible it's goldfish. It's also possible it's an orange. And what it's really saying here is that uh, we can like have an intuition that the model is using this orange color as a heuristic. And if you use hard labels, this kind of information is not conveyed. But when you allow this probabilistic distribution, you kind of are transferring this knowledge by peeking into what types of heuristics, what type of features are used by these image classifiers. Therefore, you're like giving like more knowledge in those soft max values. I think that's a great answer. Just as a follow-up question, what are some of the downsides then of using the probabilistic labels? Yeah, so I think maybe the downside is going to be very clear when we really see the connection between data distillation and knowledge distillation. As I was hinting earlier, by having these probabilistic models, you are essentially telling this new model that you're gonna train that orange is a color that is common between the goldfish and the, the, the fruit orange. 
So whatever the bias that is the teacher model might have, or whatever the bias that's inherent in those labels will be directly transferred to the student. So I think uh, from this uh, safety perspective, from a model bias perspective, we will know that learning with fewer data is good, but we're introducing this potential bias that could be harmful. You also mentioned that depending on how much data you're gonna include in your distillation set, that really changes the number of epochs and training that you should use kind of for the guidance and generation of that label. So that's kind of interesting, just sticking to your example, you say orange is a concept that can be applied to goldfish and like maybe the fruit orange or something like this. But if you're gonna be using a lot of data and you have more of a budget, maybe you want more advanced features that wouldn't necessarily be as helpful if you have very few training examples. So. I would say both your explanations match up with that result. Yeah, I think that's the intuition we're trying to give is that when you have so few data, it's better just to know orange is a feature, but when you have better budget, you can distinguish between a golden retriever and a German shepherd by more fine-tuned features, and you are better off with more well-trained labels. You had that really nice plot that showed the trade-off between knowledge and the data itself. And, and I thought that was really interesting in that it provides this like very intu intuitive, simple way to kind of like pick where you are on the curve and like you know, pinpoint, okay, this is what's optimal for us. I would assume that was with regards to one particular model architecture, but is it, do you think that, that generalizes beyond the model architecture, the model size that you're looking at? And, and if not, is there a way to potentially like extrapolate that out? I think the shape of the curve will definitely generalize across more model architectures, but I think the exact trade-off does probably depend on the use of different model architectures. But I think it's really just showing that the different heuristics and the training dynamics. So I would assume that across similar model architectures from resonance 18 to resonance 50, there are things you can extrapolate and generalize. But if you want to transfer from a ResNet to a transformer, you might be better off to re redo the experiment to get a new intuition about uh, the trade-off. That makes sense. And this was all in the context of classification. How much of this do you think would be uh, able to extend to works like, like detection tasks? So obviously you have a classification head in some of those examples, uh, but the soft labels, like how much do you think those would improve potentially performance in those tasks? Yeah, I, I think one limitation of our work is that we have primarily tried image classification just because its data distillation has been mostly focused on image classification. But I think different from all the other work that's like so fine-tuned on the classification tasks, we are pretty confident that the use of these probabilistic labels can be transferred across different tasks because I think it's kind of well understood in the machine learning domain that these uh, labels contain information. And the additional evidence I have is that because we've drawn this connection between data distillation and knowledge distillation, and in these domains, we have shown that knowledge distillation is quite good. And it indicates that, okay, that means data distillation, which we've seen like it's very similar to knowledge distillation. So I think uh, it's, it's gonna be a very promising um, way to extend to different modality, different tasks. Awesome. Thank you. I have uh, one question. It's almost kind of how much scale you open up with this approach. So before, if you're training a model, you have one example, you have one label, and then you have however many examples you have. But now you're saying you're going to use soft labels. And so you're almost like blending these different examples together or these different probabilities of different classes together. How do you even decide how many classes you're going to include in any given blend? You know, so you could have like 50% this, 50% this, and then do a 25, 75 split, or you could have a blend of like 10 classes and maybe one is 10%, one is 50%. It just seems like you're bringing in a lot of complexity, like clearly the performance is there, but how do you kind of make these decisions about like, what is the right amount of blend and how many classes, and can that change depending on what the class is? So if you get, you talked about earlier about golden retriever and German shepherd. So like, if you're talking about dogs, is there different ways to blend those concepts together, but with objects that are more distinct, maybe you don't have to blend them as much. I, I completely agree. I think there are like smarter ways to achieve, as you say, like this kind of blend and based on what do you want the model to get good at and what kind of like storage budget you have. I think there are smarter ways to, to do this uh, blend. But I think overall, like we kind of the goal of this work is to make people realize that it's fun to generate a lot of images, but let's look at labels and open the door of like the entire research that people can think about. Okay, then how do we optimize those labels? Because in this work, we all 
as you've seen, we've just like explored one simple and most straightforward way, which is just using export labels. Sunny, I'm, I'm wondering, like in the paper, we, sorry, you guys primarily evaluate soft labels on, you know, relatively clean data sets, but in real world applications, of course, data is noisy, it has outliers, it's inconsistent. I'm wondering how robust are soft label based distillation methods in the face of such noisy data? Like will noisy data negatively impact the quality of the soft labels that are generated by the expert models? And how do we even like mitigate these effects? For example, can we develop a technique maybe that uh, identifies and maybe corrects or reweights the noisy soft labels uh, during the distillation process? Yeah, so I think my hope is that at least in the frame of work of using expert to generate labels, by training the expert on this noisy data, the, the expert itself is able to do the denoising by actually understanding the underlying pattern. So the first way to make sure that your soft labels are good is that your expert is doing good enough on a held out validation set or like on a clean denoised test set. And by that kind of quality control, you can confidently say that this expert, despite trained on these noisy data, are generating labels that still captures the essential information. And I think that's kind of one way that I can see that soft labels can still be pretty uh, robust against uh, noisy data. And I'm wondering, like, you know, alternatively, would it be possible to develop methods that maybe selectively apply a soft label to specific instances or classes where they seem to provide the most benefit and then use hard labels for the rest? I think if data budget is, or like storage budget is kind of the biggest concern there, then definitely there are a lot of things we can squeeze. Or for example, do we really need the full soft max distribution or we really just need the top K where it contains the most informative labels in, in, any, in any image? And we have experiments in the paper showing that indeed, like we can like be quite data efficient by using only top K and still achieve uh, similar results. Yeah, so I think definitely hard and soft blend is one potential. And I think there are other potentials. For example, you can like apply augmentations and then using different soft labels, even for the same image. I think there are a lot of variations people can explore. Awesome. Thank you, Sunny. Really appreciate you joining us today and, and chatting with us. If you will be at NIRIPS in Vancouver, please come and say hi to us at the Voxel 51 booth. I'd love to hook you up with some swag and just uh, meet you in person. Thank you again for joining us. I will do it and thank you. Have a good day.